What's going on, everybody, and welcome to another amazing episode of your favorite podcast, Real Talk Atlanta. We're your hosts, River the Realtor. Mika W. I'm Ashley Larray. And I'm Taisha Renee. And y'all, we are back. And as you can see, we kind of switched it up yet again. Another new space. <laughs> yeah. We are literally going to try all the spaces in here. And then yes. we want your feedback on which one you guys like yeah. the most. So I'm excited. This one is like the grown vibe, charcuterie vibe. Yeah. Moscow Mule. Okay. Moscow Mule yeah, for sure. The yeah. white one is champagne. Yeah. Chardonnay. It's getting like the classy yeah. ladies. Yeah. It's getting ladies of real time. Yeah. This is even I a red wine. Sip with a red Ooh, wine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Some I jazz. love it. Sneak a love jazz. Jazz. Oh, okay. jazz. <laughs> We're not doing that one. But anyway, <laughs> let's go ahead and get it started. Kick it off with our peaks of the week. What What do you ladies have going on? What is y'all peak for the week? Hmm. I feel like my peak for last week was my closing that I just had for my buyer. She's extremely excited. It was a good deal. Nice. It was good. Where was like, it? Where did they buy a house at? In Fairburn. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, it was nine that. acres. It was the nine, nine acre property. Oh, oh, okay. oh okay. Yes. that one. Okay, yeah. Yes. Nice. Um, what was the price point? Mm-hmm. Give us the price point. Okay, five thirty-five. Oh, really? with all that acreage, yeah. that's, that's good. Great. That was a acres? good deal. Yeah. Yes, and they left her a garden. They left her like jacuzzi, a sauna. Like Ooh, it was wow. everything. I love that. Nine acres. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, like <laughs> it was a good co-op. So yeah, that's great. I love Congratulations. it. Congratulations. So we love Congrats. a huge <laughs> transaction. <laughs> My peak of the week is that River the Realtor can still never be played with. Period. I just basically had an agent that tried to like get over on my client in terms of like repairs. You know, oh, we'll do it in X amount of days. They end up not doing it. So we escrow money, obviously, so that whoever, you know, is the wrongly done party is, ends up walking away with something. And she wasn't trying to let the money go, but you didn't, you know, do what you said you were going to do. And unfortunately... Got to accept the repercussions of your actions, man. <laughs> so, my client is $7,000 richer. I'm happy, and oh, that's good. the repair shall get done. I Watch who you that. hire, man. Oh, okay. yeah. And yeah. Shout, out to, yeah. shout out to Tiffany Halls. Okay. Well, she yeah. really be in the trenches with us, and I love that for <laughs> Yes. Her. My peak is very similar. Shout out to Tiffany, because I had a client terminate um, a deal that we had in Atlanta. We had major title issues on the home. Um, nothing that we could control in the Is it the one that we were talking about the last studio? With just mm-hmm. the, yeah. That, that deal ran her through the trenches. No, that one, I feel like I was down there too. Is Southwest she shopping Atlanta. again? Um, not right now. I, right I now. believe I mean, she with that dress, early. I would need to relax. Yeah, yeah she is like, yeah. this is too much. And she, I mean, she had a major deadline of when she had planned to move. And so the, there were kind of no more options. So right. um, she renewed her lease for a little bit and will be shopping later this year. Yeah. But um when we decided that we had to terminate the listing agent was like well we're going after your earnest money <laughs> and i immediately called tiffany haas i didn't even have to say hello on the phone she, she immediately know. was like yeah she was like he's not, not taking your earnest money so she got me yeah. give me, give me she said, no i'm not gonna get it back <laughs> no i'm not gonna keep it shout out to savannah too because i just love that lady <laughs> so yeah my client as well 8k richard back in her account so yeah. 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 it's the client it's the win yeah. 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 these are really peaks okay. they really are and watch the attorneys that you use try to use your agent's attorney because if she had went with somebody else she wouldn't have got that money they would try to play with you for yeah. sure Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, my peak is gonna be. Uh, I was trying to think of something while you guys were talking. <laughs> but I'm gonna say business in general. Mm-hmm. You know, as agents, we have ups, we have downs, we have those seasons. And right now, it's that busy season that mm-hmm. I'm grateful for. Tired. Yes. Yeah. Grateful. You can sleep when Bless. you die. <laughs> uh, okay. Goodness. That was great. <laughs> okay. Well, I love that. And I think speaking of business, I think we all have very, very good real estate businesses. We've established ourselves in this industry. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And as such, I think it's only right that we are properly compensated for all the for work that work. we do. Oh, yeah. Now, Let's get to it. Y'all know I like to get into it, you ladies. So for the ladies who are <laughs> feeling like we don't work for our money, I think this episode is for you guys. I get a lot of questions. That? Girl, <laughs> I was on threads and I had seen a couple things but anyway <laughs> mm. um we get a lot of questions just in general about how we're compensated where the money comes from and then the most important is obviously like what that money goes to mm-hmm. what services we provide um so today we're really going to talk about commission structure you know how we're paid the principle behind it and of course you know whether or not we feel like it's justified mm-hmm. but i think y'all know the answer to that yeah, so right. um let's just kind of kick it off from like the basic level like what is commission how would y'all explain commission to like a client who was like uh uh-uh, what is what is these it's, if you're a salesperson <laughs> most likely your pay is commission based like if you're selling a car if you're selling a product it's going to be how many people you sell it to and that's how much you get compensated it's not 
hourly based. It's not salary based. It's based on how many sales you've completed. Exactly. So I think that's basically a simple way to say, okay, this is what commission. I don't get paid until I've sold this item to you. Whether do y'all remember when we were sixteen, we used to get like those knife. Jobs? I heard about that, but oh no, my god, no, I no, actually no. did that. <laughs> Wait, what? Yes. Yeah, you did it. It's like, like this going company, door door, selling yeah, knives, like selling yeah. knives. Mm-hmm. So that's like a sales job. Oh, girl, we didn't do that in Chicago. <laughs> Ain't nobody <laughs> coming up to nobody's house crazy. selling knives. Yeah. At sixteen, they gonna see you yeah. off that porch with something else. It was a scam because once you get in there, we're like, how are we gonna sell knives to people? Like, <laughs> it's a whole them? Walmart. Yeah, people yeah, they were like fancy luxury knives. Yeah. I heard about it. But I've heard I, it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, girl. Child. So that's commission. <laughs> commission live in the suburbs. Yeah, I think a good thing to realize <laughs> is that commission is typically like you know either a flat dollar amount mm-hmm. per you know dollar you've sold or mm-hmm. a flat percentage amount off of the price of something that you've sold mm-hmm. that we see on every transaction. Now, I think what some people have to realize is that even though we have an industry standard, you know, even sometimes we don't even receive like the full percentage of what's standard for this industry so mm-hmm. it really does fluctuate between you know x amount of percent and y percentage but it's right. a flat fee we get only at the close of a transaction mm-hmm. and i think it's important to note that the brokerage companies that we work for we don't we aren't paid a salary to them right they mm-hmm. only pay us at closing when mm-hmm. we have a commission so it's not like we're getting a check every two weeks from our brokerage company or like we're w2 literally not until you sign the papers and get those keys do we get paid and it's crazy mm. that even when we get paid, we don't get paid the full amount. I think mm. people look at those mm-hmm. settlement statements and they're like, oh, this agent got X amount. Girl, I wish I, wish I could get all yeah. of that. <laughs> I wish. That's not even all going to me. So right. I think it's like they think we're getting this large lump sum. I mean, we we getting paid for what we're doing. However, we do split this money X amount of ways. If you're on a team, you're splitting with your team, your brokerage for holding your license. You're, yeah. I think this is the only profession where we are paying our employer. 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 Yeah. Basically, yeah. we pay you. Mm-hmm. Because they're oh, the right. powerhouse, so they have to, you know, on contracts and legality, legality and stuff like that. So we have to, we cannot, as agents, we cannot work. But we work for ourselves, but we need a broker. A broker, yeah. yeah. You yeah. need a broker. Like yeah. an overseeing power. So yeah. it's essentially someone who kind of just is a safety net for us. Like she said, when we have legal issues, mm-hmm. when we have just anything that we can't really take on ourselves. And so I think Taisha brings up a good point. It's not even just that. X or Y a percentage off the dollar that we've sold. We also have brokerage splits, mm-hmm. brokerage fees, office fees, MLS fees. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everything. Listen, oh, marketing yeah. fees. Yeah. Marketing yeah. fees. Fees, fees, fees. Yeah. People <laughs> have to remember, too, our commissions are tax-free. So we also we have, have to, to put aside money tax. for yes. taxes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Ooh, so God. what y'all think we're getting is sometimes not not even close to what we actually take home. You thought. But let's just kind of talk about, I'm weak, let's just kind of talk about <laughs> what it is we're doing to even get to that take-home number. I think mm-hmm. everybody has to realize that every minute we spent with you is time spent on the mm-hmm. job. Mm-hmm. Every minute we're not with you that we're it's doing something spent. every half is time spent on the job. So mm-hmm. y'all can get paid for working 40 hours a week. We should be able to get paid for 100 hours a week. Okay. Let's kind of talk about that. Like, What are some <laughs> of our duties to our clients um, that really are encompassing the things that we get from our commission? I so think for, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I think for buyers, the moment you schedule that consultation is the moment out. It is work. We're working because mm-hmm. the moment we're on the phone with you, we're breaking down the criteria of what you need to even qualify for the home, connecting you with our preferred partners to get you qualified for the home. And then once you're qualified, taking you out to see all of these houses, we're working from the minute you schedule that consultation. Granted, Absolutely. you're not our client until you sign our buyer brokerage agreement. But even any type of advice or assistance or education that we're giving you, that is us working for you. Mm-hmm. Right? It's time. Yeah, it's time. Yeah, it's time. It's time consuming. And it, it's very important to also mention, like, yeah, the average hours worked per week is 40 hours. Mm-hmm. But I can guarantee you all of us are working well <laughs> over 40 hours 40 a week. <laughs> right. What is that? Like, from the time that I wake up, and y'all know I get up early. I get so. up at, like, 5 o'clock from the time. Time I wake up. You still don't be ready till the. I just had to say it. Well, okay. (laughs) (laughs) From the time I wake up, five o'clock in the morning, till the time I go to bed, maybe like ten o'clock, eleven o'clock. I am open to talk to any of my clients. Work all day, literally from when I open my eyes to when I close them. So exactly. I mean, I don't know many people who want to work for free, but um, I mean that's just kind of the name of the business. Okay. (laughs) 
I'm not doing it. <laughs> yeah. I got bills to pay. Yeah. No, no, I totally agree. I feel like when people look at us as agents, they're looking at just one person but not seeing that it's an actual business. So mm-hmm. I love the point that you bring for buyers as soon, and our structures are different, right? Mm-hmm. So when we're talking about commission, we can kind of, so we're going to get into the fact, like, if people have different systems, sometimes it costs more. Because for me, as my process is, I have my assistant onboarding you from the system has to get paid, right? Mm-hmm. The systems that we use, the, the the link that you book the consultation with is a monthly fee every month, you know? Yeah. Um, if we're talking about, like, DP, like the nitty-gritty of how much it costs to sustain a business, mm-hmm. we're paying all of that up front, yeah. right. starting from our cars, you know, starting yeah. from yeah. showing. Yeah. The car notes, <laughs> the gas, the Supra, mm-hmm. you know, the lock, MLS, lock, lock, yeah. the lock boxes. Um, and sometimes I feel like, and y'all tell me if I'm wrong, from a buyer's agent, right? And uh, I feel like buyer's agents is more, we get more paid for our time because we do spend a lot of times mm-hmm. looking for properties, you know, finding you the house. It doesn't matter how long it takes and we get compensated for it. But on a listing side, you're having to make all of these expenses. I have two mm-hmm. listings on the market. And I have all of these expenses that I have to do up front mm-hmm. and get reimbursed back at mm. closing. Photography mm-hmm. I think that's a good thing. 600. Before we dive into that, because I really yeah. want to go on there, I do want to kind of go back to what you said about the basic level. I think yeah. everybody, especially as a client, you always want a top-tier experience. Mm-hmm. You want a seamless process, and you want to work with somebody who has these systems in place so mm-hmm. that your buying experience is seamless or has all these resources so you can easily access those things. But I think Nika makes a good point. Those things cost money. Mm-hmm. When you need us to you know be there to have an appointment or something like that to open those e-keys that cost money right our mm-hmm. onboard structure, just organizing your paperwork making sure we have you know different people on our team that can reach out to yeah. you, do this or that showings right getting on your schedule and having to negate the fact that we have 10 other clients right we have to figure out how to fill in those gaps so a lot of people have to get paid a lot of things have to get paid mm-hmm. just so you can have a seamless transaction and I think that's very important to note that like that also comes out of our pay when Mm -hmm. you work at a job they they bought you your computer yes you don't pay to go into their office they pay Mm -hmm. your insurance Mm -hmm. you can that was that was was I know know that health insurance is it's high but I mean think about it nine to five people (laughs) y'all don't pay to go into your office we have office fees we have to pay to have a designated work area in some place so i think a lot of the things that we need just to make sure your experience is the way that you want it to be that costs money as well that comes out of our pocket directly so i think that's something to think about and then on top of that with the new norm quote unquote that buyers are seeing on instagram now you want a professional photographer oh yeah you want the lavish closing gifts we don't bring you a gift to close and it's like oh my agent is terrible right it's like okay now you want me to bring you a gift and as a buyer you don't really even compensate us right right let's talk about it like the buyers do not pay you don't pay some agents and it's kind of moving toward that in a way, that's a whole nother conversation, though, yeah. where buyers, buying agents are charging a retainer fee or charging a set amount for their services. However, most times buyers do not pay. So I don't understand what the concern is. Yeah. yeah. Buyers in, and as an honest. agent, people have to remember, like, you're obligated to charge whatever fee or service that you want. I mean, yeah, for the cost business. of your service. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So I know a ton of agents who do charge retainer fees. I get it. Like mm. you said, up front, we're paying for gas. We're doing this. We're doing that. Even to write an offer, the contracts that we use, that costs that money that yeah. we're paying <laughs> yes, for. Yes, it does. So, wait, yes, I, want it does. Y'all to, I want y'all to put and a fee because we're going to have a little ruffling feather session because I really want to get <laughs> what y'all have. Before we jump into that, because y'all, y'all got me hot. <laughs> I want to bring back up what Nita said, though, about, you know, buyers, we're really compensated for time. And I think what you got to remember is, like, a lot of y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Y'all will go through the process and waste more than 40 hours a month. And still don't even buy the house. So it's like... Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. So it's like we have a lot of time wasted. Plus, you know, the time spent actually on people who actually want to buy homes. But I think for sellers, like you said, there are a lot of expenses that have to get paid up front. That I've never, I'm not gonna say never, but a lot of my listings or selling clients, I don't see them like. You need you need, you need anything. Open right. houses cost mm. money. Mm-hmm. Photography for the house costs money. Marketing your home costs money. All these little tackle things box. we do. Mm-hmm. The lock box the open costs. Open for sale and signs. Cost. <laughs> Everything sale. costs money. Staging the staging. <laughs> Child, Ooh, the staging is a big ticket. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you have to understand, I feel like as agents, we're never going to come up to you and say, 
oh, you know, I've spent, you know, like we're never going to, we just expect you to be understanding, knowing that if you know, like some, at my consultations, I let you know, this is my duty as your agent. This is your duty as my client. So you know the things that we're doing, but I feel like, yeah, like whenever a client is kind of like, coming at the fact that oh why you get paid so much or kind of start having these expectations Mm -hmm. you lose me yeah i'm lost (laughs) i'm gone i'm gone (laughs) because you just don't know like the many things that we do especially as a brand i feel like all of us does have this kind of luxury realtor package things because we want you to have an experience in that Mm cause and if you expect that at least the understanding is kind of like i expect you to understand you know, if you and I that, question you my commission. Yeah. 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 yeah, I yeah. urge people who are not in like this entrepreneurial space or like in this. I urge you to think how you would feel if after you've done a, a good service at your job, mm-hmm. your employer goes. So why do you feel like we should pay you for this week's work? Imagine you on the would be like, no, hold on, <laughs> sir, because yeah. I've been here working <laughs> all week. That. Like, imagine. imagine having to like not argue necessarily, but imagine having to explain to somebody why, why you, you deserve. deserve to be paid for the mm-hmm. time, effort, and resources that you're giving somebody for to mm-hmm. make their dreams essentially mm-hmm. come true. Like mm-hmm. on the first and the fifteenth, it'll be a nightmare. It would happen. be a nightmare. Mm-hmm. Like, and Seriously. if y'all really got paid for what y'all be doing at y'all jobs. You wouldn't like, be, be able to buy a house. Okay. <laughs> Y'all wouldn't know how to be getting paid. <laughs> not be pre-approved. <laughs> but no, I really, I love the things that y'all brought up because I kind of had some little questions I was going to throw at y'all just to mm-hmm. kind of see because y'all Go know ahead. I'm Go messy. On. Go on. <laughs> My very first question, of course, was, so based on everything, like y'all know, do y'all think, um, you know, commission is justified and what we're paying, what we're getting paid for commission is justified? I deserve to get paid more. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Speak on it. I want I want to hear from you. I feel y'all. like it's it's based on the the client and the experience though. Mm-hmm. Cause some clients it's like it's easy, like we go see a few houses, you know exactly what you want under contract. But some clients will drag you through the mud. Wasn't even really? worth it. Dra- you, we we get we sell this house, I get the mind like, girl, I need a little bit more. Yeah. This ain't yeah. Even enough for me to wait. Like I had a client, I, I showed them houses and I said this before every single day for a year. <laughs> Plus, no, I have one like that. You too. know, you have those clients that they're yeah. there for a while, but sometimes they go ghost. Yeah. Sometimes you got, you know, just checking on them every single day. <laughs> they ain't like, like none of every, them. And, and, and the price point is just crazy, but every single day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm showing houses. And at the end, you know, I kept wanting to, like, you know what? I'm about to give up. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. this is just not fun. But I built I built this, like, personable relationship. relationship. Yeah. Then, like, oh my God, like, I'm. I'm you can't leave now, with y'all. Like, yeah. you can't I, I love y'all. Y'all are really row, stressing baby. me out. But I love you so much, but I need a little bit more pay. <laughs> I feel that. And I hated that I did not, like, charge some type of retainer or something. Like, I'm still battling that charging buyers thing. Like, I'm yeah. still mm-hmm. battling that. Wait, wait, wait. wait don't, don't go with me first. Don't go with me Don't go with me Okay, because okay. okay. that's okay. why I was going to Because that's my second one. But, like, what you think about buyer commission? I mean, commission in general. for me, I, like, I agree with you completely. I think it depends on the deal, depends on the client, because there are some times where, like you said, you can show a client. I don't mind showing, like, I feel like on average, my clients typically find a house between, like, the first and fifth showing. And that's fine. We can knock those out in a day. But I have some clients, um, I've had clients where we've shopped for six months, like, actively looking for a house. And we may have found something. Our offers kept getting rejected, whatever the reason was. And at the end of the deal, when we did finally close, Yeah, I got paid, but I feel like I lost money in terms of my time, all the resources that I put into it, closing gifts, the experience, all that stuff. Like, yeah, we were shopping for six months, but this is like pay of like, I felt like one month almost. Like Mm. it it honestly Mm -hmm. feels like I lost money in a sense. So Mm -hmm. it it completely depends on the client. And we do a lot of work on the back end. I feel like our clients never even see, I never even even tell them half the things that I'm doing on the back end, like negotiating, like going to bat for them. So child some yeah. deals yeah i think we might deserve a little more but some most of the time i feel like it's justifiable yeah right so. right um i think is is yeah and is justified because now that i have a showing assistant now that um i have a transaction coordinator um and i see the value of that mm-hmm. up front i just let my clients know like hey You can go ahead and hire another realtor that's not going to make sure that everything is, you know, you're not as comfortable in the process as possible. Because me, not only I'm doing this for you, but I'm doing this for me. So I could be there mentally with you. Mm -hmm. I could be there emotionally with you and not have to worry about 
okay, are our files in compliance or, you know, like you can't see the homes when I'm not available. Like I'm creating an experience for you and that value, I will tell you that up front, it will be your decision to either. Because I do charge right now. I am charging a transactional fee and that's because I have a transaction coordinator and I have shown assistant and I promise you your experience is going to be amazing. So that's just that. Like when the yeah. value's there, you can the value is yeah, there. You sure, can definitely sure. explain that, and they will understand. Like the right buyer will understand mm-hmm. that. Yeah, key. Mm-hmm. I think that's a major key. I mean, to everybody's point, it's absolutely justified. I agree. I think on some transactions, when it's taking, I think if it's taking six months because of the state of the market, you should never be penalized for that, right? If you mm-hmm. are actively shopping and you're putting in an offer once a week and it's getting denied because your price point is oversaturated or you know whatever, mm-hmm. that's never your fault. But if you are like, oh, my God, the lights, and, like, all of this crazy stuff, it's like, girl, and by and <laughs> scene. It's like, this is crazy. <laughs> I just, I think so on certain transactions. I think when the buyer becomes the issue, and I'm just be real, that happens a lot of times. Mm-hmm. When you become the issue as a buyer, I do think the conversation should be a little bit higher because what gives you the right to play with my time and my mm-hmm. energy yeah. <laughs> in the same capacity that somebody who really is one in the home and is mm-hmm. willing to do the work for it. So I definitely think, like, you know, once we get to a certain threshold, it's like, we can do it. Yeah. But it's going to cost you the right. same way it's kind of costing me because I feel like, actually, sometimes I get my check and I'm like, all right. I did exactly. something strange, right. but exactly. it's a little piece of change. Exactly. Yeah. And it's I not that we're trying to rush them. To yeah. find right. It's like, right. it's no rush. I want you to find the perfect house, but you can kind of tell after a certain period, like, okay. Mm-hmm. Now you're playing. Now you're playing. Now you're playing. Like, yeah. it's like, I, we need to talk. Yeah. Seriously. As a professional woman, I do not want to feel like I'm doing strange things for little pieces of change. And, like, that's what it always comes down to. I find myself in positions like... Yeah. That was a strange yeah, was okay. situation. Yeah. So. And, and, and that has to do with, especially when you're, this is me. Like, we can look for the house as, you know, I'm a little patient on that side. But when we keep going under contract Ooh. and my transaction coordinator Speak has to it. already start the file, Ooh. the attorney's already working on it, the lender's already working on it, you keep backing out. Ooh. You know, Cold being feet. indecisive, Ooh. like letting it go too far. Okay. You, you know? Start stomping in this mug. You see y'all over there? Wait, no, I got to jump to the question is, yeah. so do y'all think that buyers, because as we stated, commission comes from the selling side of the transaction. Our fees industry standard is that buyers do not pay anything yeah do you guys think that buyers should pay commission or pay some type of fee yes yes um i say i it's yes and no it de- i think it's very situational it depends it depends yeah, on it does like depend. for instance like investors a lot of times when you're looking for like off-market properties or investment properties the seller won't pay for a commission so in that case i think it's okay to ask the buyer but I think it's also good to remember, I say I don't think all buyers should have to pay commission. For instance, when you're purchasing a home, obviously you're the one, you're coming out of pocket for mm-hmm. thousands of dollars. So you're coming out money and the seller, for instance, they already have equity in their home where they can mm-hmm. just take that out and that's what's being used to pay us. Mm-hmm, so right. I think in a case like that, no, because the seller is going to pay for it anyway. Mm-hmm. But if it's a very difficult deal, like I said, if it's like an investment property where the commission isn't covered or what do you guys think? I guess this is a two part question. Well, you can't do that because you're already telling the buyers up front when they're signed their buyer brokerage agreement. Um, you you have to tell them something up front so right. they don't yeah. at closing, they're like, What is this? What is this right. fee? So it's not based on that's why me now I'm charging it's based. I have three different packages. So I'm presenting packages to my buyer. If you want this package, this is how much it costs, this will cover this, this additional. Now if you not okay with it, that's fine, but you won't, just won't get that, right? However, you have to you let get what the, you pay for. You get what you pay for. Okay. And that's every service that you run into, right? Even the car wash. Mm-hmm. You either get the basic package. What is the the, or you get the, <laughs> the, the extreme. Not well, you extreme. 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 Well, you'll so, know what your client whether wants. Whether it's, it's going to be difficult, let's be honest. If you work with an investor, <laughs> like the client, I, I remember I called Nika last weekend because I have a client he wants to sell his, or he wants to purchase a home he's living in right now, and the seller didn't want to pay commission. Yeah. So he asked me, like, should we try to get the seller to do it, or, or do I, should I pay your commission? I told him if the sell, uh, that's different. Like, yeah. if the seller isn't going to pay for it, then, yeah, you would have Somebody to do that. Pay. Someone yes, has to do exactly. that. exactly. Yeah. So Somebody you have to make different. that decision yeah. up front. So, yes, it does depend on the client. Because if I see someone is really making an effort to purchase a home, they're using all their reserves, 
then I can kind of like okay, work with and it. I, I think I that's where my work thing comes it. in. Like yeah. most of my, a lot of my buyers are first time home owners. They mm-hmm. just graduated college, just starting their careers, and I am not trying to like kill y'all pockets. Like I'm gonna just be satisfied with what the seller gives me. But at sometimes like you have these other buyers who like okay, well maybe I can charge you like a little bit more because like you're not. A first time home, like mm. you've done this before, so you're it's kind of like hurting. I'm toggling. But you're hurting me, right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think it's the empathy side. I was like, oh, I don't want to charge you, but yeah. business side, I'm like, girl, I yeah, need to charge you. Yeah. And something yeah. else to note too is that we don't always just work with buyers, even if we have leases that we're working on. Mm-hmm. For all of my lease transactions, yes, the the tenant has to pay me the prospective yeah. tenant. Oh, I, I definitely want to talk about the lease, but I do want to say on the buyer thing. I think I like what you said about the packages because I have gone and got the basic car wash, and I get in my car like. Girl, you should have got the extra and then got what I really it's wanted. It's only $2 more, $3 more. <laughs> it don't more, be that bro. much. Now, hold on. It don't be that much. It won't be like that in real estate. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, but the concept, it's the concept. Very serious. Yeah. But I agree. I think that there should be more, instead of like packages, I want it to like be more so like expectations. Like I want my clients to know that I'm here for you. But at which point you felt like it was okay to waste my time, take me away from my family, from my man, from my brunches. Mm-hmm. Like now you owe me a little, I'm going to have to get some of that back in blood i think that <laughs> when you go under contract and you terminate the day before closing because you woke up and had an epiphany listen if you tell me that god told you i ain't gonna argue with god but god i also had a conversation with him mm-hmm. and he told me to my tell god you said. my god said <laughs> for you to give me my money okay <laughs> because i just feel like i think that's the part that everybody misses so i think for me i think buyers should pay some type of commission, but I think it should be based on certain requirements. Like, Mm -hmm. if you terminate for a reason unbeannounced to anybody but you, sorry, but you know what I'm saying? That just can't work like that. Certain stipulations, I think, should be put in place just to protect our time. To make sure it's fair. I'm along with it. Are y'all all all If I I did that, do y'all know I probably would be up at least a 30 right now for people who have played in my face? Yeah. Yeah. Like, in the event, such and such and such, you owe this. In, in the, the event, event your yeah. God such such. tells you something on yeah. the okay. 11th hour, my God said. <laughs> oh, I, I can do that. that. I think so that'll do right for me. Money. I'm going to do that. Yeah, this, yeah, <laughs> in but the it, event, give me money. I don't get contract. this, I'm going to need you to cover this. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I, I have, those, important yeah, I have, have contracts. Ways. I literally had a client. This was actually the very first house that I sold. We He wanted to terminate um, right before closing because the house had carpet. And he said his wife was allergic to whatever the carpet that. was. Okay. Oh yeah, you. So. And so literally, and this is the thing again with the expenses that we pay. We also have insurance. We call it E and O insurance. Um, we have lawyers and stuff. So if a buyer wants to terminate just for any reason, one, you're probably going to lose your earnest money. But there's so many people involved in a transaction. Like you can't just back out and expect. Right. These are like con. What is it called? Legal contractual agreements. You yeah. can't just yeah. back out. <laughs> And I still got my commission, even though he terminated. Yeah, because I just want to be clear about this. I don't ever want to be rude, but I'm like, sue me, Susie. I'll sue anybody. It's <laughs> yeah. in the contract that says if you back out for any reason, you technically have to pay everybody. So I think we just mm-hmm. say all this to say to make sure that when you are working with a real estate agent or just anybody who's working off of commissions or working off, you know, your actions essentially to get paid, that y'all are mindful of these things and that y'all respect, mm-hmm. you yeah. know, the work that we do because respect I feel like. the profession. Exactly. Yeah. That's like ordering food at a restaurant. And drinks and stuff, and then like walking out on the tab. Like, bye, y'all. Doesn't y'all and these uh, analogies, analogies, analogies are crazy, crazy, but I know crazy. the service industry professionals are probably eating us up right now. But anyway, um, I hope from this episode that y'all really do understand like the importance of what we do as realtors and just kind of value us and value our time and energy because yes. we deserve to get paid. Pay us, don't play with us. Okay, and if you don't want to pay us, do it yourself. Period. Period. So I love that. We we would definitely love y'all comments below and tell us what we y'all think about We need to do a part two to this episode. Yeah, I would I love like it's a little bit more. I think so too. I think that kind of scratches <laughs> we'll the right surface. Right. But mm-hmm. let's let's do a quick little segue into our favorite segment of the day, our question of the day with our real survey. Ashley yes. Lorray. Yes. So <laughs> this segment of the show is called the question of the day, where we take our questions from you guys, and you can submit those questions to us. On Instagram, follow us at Real Talk Atlanta or shoot us an email at realtalkatlpod at gmail.com. So, Nika, you want to do the question of the day? <laughs> no, no, I'm just, I'm just playing. So, someone wanted to know um, who is one person that has been a major help for our business this Please year? Please pick me first. <clears throat> I wish I knew your over. middle name, but Miss Tiffany Haas, you have been probably <laughs> oh, yeah. the most impactful person in my business. I think anytime it comes to a closing, whether it be an issue on my client side, because I'm truly not perfect and they ain't either. 
or be like the list age or something. Like when I say Tiffany gets in the trenches every single time, she yeah. picks up the phone and she is the managing owner. Like she is the head. She's involved. And she gets in the trenches. This is literally like I work for Warren Buffett as well. I've never seen Mr. Buffett. <laughs> I've seen Tiffany Haas pull up, pop out, and handle that business every time. And it's just like I am thoroughly grateful and appreciative. So if I could think of anybody in my business from day one, Mm-hmm. It would be Tiffany Halls. We love the Halls on time. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Jessica. Jessica, okay, Lachey, like all of y'all. Like, all of y'all. Shayla, <laughs> Shayla, like, please. I love yeah, all y'all. Um, I think I'll go next. For me, it would be my assistant, Junie. Hey, Junie. Junie. Yeah. Okay, Tiana so. <laughs> Not you hired Tiana Taylor Dorn. <laughs> Ashley, stop. Okay, <laughs> so I've been, like me, I don't like help just because I'm so controlling. So I'm working on it, right? (laughs) She's my, like, first, like, hired help on my team, on my business, and it has helped me so tremendously. Um, She's great. Just everything I hoped for. Because sometimes when you come to your business, because it's a lot of people that are like, oh, we're going to get the job done. They're, like, malicious. Or, like, Mm -hmm. June has been amazing. She keep it professional, and Kiki, you know, we get the job done. I love that. <laughs> I, love, I love a professional. Mm-hmm. Oh, so okay. That's the yeah. name you gave her? Her name so is June, June, but you call her Junie. Yeah, her name is June, but I call her oh, Junie. Oh, y'all that close. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I'm sure you're glad you took that. Yeah, that's Junie. Finally get an assistant. Um, for me, I guess I'll say two people. I definitely think Tiffany Hawes, like, if there's ever an Period. issue, I will call her personal phone, like, with a question. I almost put her down as my emergency contact one time. I was just like, honestly, <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> call this lady. lady. <laughs> oh, my. Like, she's a beast, and, like, she knows what she's talking yeah. about as far as, like, there's so much legal stuff that goes on mm-hmm. in a real estate transaction. I'm not a lawyer. I did not go to law school. I can't tell you a lot of the things that Tiffany Hawes can tell you. I will call her about anything, literally. Um, so definitely shout out to her. And I'll say, I'm stealing your person. I think we all have stole him, but George Wise. Oh, oh yeah. The lender. He is so great. That's him and his team. Say, yeah. yeah, him and his team are great. <laughs> and they're really, Yeah, George. you got to give people flowers. Like, And even, I've been sending all of my clients to him. Um, he's so on top of it, him and his team. In their follow-up, that's shout my favorite Shout out to Javon, thing. too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The <laughs> that's, that's great. great. Javon yeah. and Michelle. Yeah. I love a good follow-up. Yes. I love a good follow-up. Yes, because that's one thing in my business that I feel like I'm still trying to work on is follow up but they keep me on my toes for sure for sure for sure I'm definitely Mm -hmm. gonna piggyback I was gonna say George because George is not only my lender but like George feels like my business partner we get on the phone talking more less our clients yes once we get done with that it's like okay so what are we doing to yeah. continue elevating our business. You Georgia know, it's always a conversation. The, yeah. How can I impact I have, your business? Yes. yes, and we are always talking about new ways, and he's always giving me new ideas on what I can do to get that business, so I definitely appreciate that because he does. I have to do that. Then I would say my second one, I'm going to have to say all of y'all, plus Justice. Aww. I'm going to say my girls because I feel like every time I talk to each one of y'all individually too, yeah. it's like it's that motivation. It's like we tell them what's going on mm-hmm, and yeah. it's like we give each other ideas too. So like shout out it. to my girls and shout that. out to Justice. Shout out to Justice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody, yeah. like the five of us, like we really kick it and kick it. I swear y'all, every time we do like the energy, be, well, first we get into it. We yeah. always <laughs> argue, y'all. <laughs> every time we're right. together, we are arguing. And then yeah. we'd be like, okay, so. Then it'd be like, all right, okay, cool. so right. We love each other. I love that. No, I appreciate that. And I'm, I'm glad we got that moment to give everybody their flowers because I think the, the impact is real. Yeah. So yeah. if you didn't get anything from this episode, I hope that you got that. Your realtor deserves to get paid. We deserve to get paid. And, mm-hmm. yeah, love on the people that support you in your business because mm-hmm. I think it really does go a long way. So I love this. Look, I think that was okay. a good one. Yeah, yeah. Let us know if part two. Let us know if y'all want yeah. part two. Because we'll get into that leases and them leases yeah. traditions and yeah. really brush y'all on the head. That's but, a whole other story. <laughs> now, we appreciate it. Thank you guys, as always, for tuning in. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and get with us on the next episode of Real Talk Atlanta. See y'all. Bye. Bye. Bye.